Here at Real Life English, we're getting into the Christmas spirit. And so this week's podcast lesson is all about Christmas expressions and vocabulary. You may have heard some of these in TV series, in movies, and even songs. So if you listen to today's podcast, you're going to learn a lot of what these expressions and these words actually mean. As always, we have some exclusive content over on our Instagram at reallife.english. So make sure that you head on over there for that as soon as you finish listening to or watching this podcast. Hi, uh, yeah, boys and girls, citizens of the world. This is Ethan from Real Life English, where we believe that listening to podcasts is a fun, natural, effective, and marvelous way to learn English. So download this podcast and listen to it while you're stuck in traffic, taking a walk down a snowy meadow, or even wrapping up your Christmas presents. Oh uh, yeah, so I'm joined here in Andrea's living room, actually, by the one and only Andrea. How's it going, Andrea? I'm great, thank you. It's so nice to be doing this in person. It feels like it's been a really exactly. long time since it's we've done ages. it. been ages. Exactly. What does that mean? So when we say it's been ages, like if you think of the ages, for example, a long time has passed. Exactly. So we have not recorded this in person for a long time and we wanted to get together because Christmas is right around the corner. And we thought that this would be a really nice way to actually get in the Christmas spirit a little bit is by doing a special podcast, kind of teaching you a little bit of cultural knowledge and also kind of like vocabulary and expressions that you would need if you're in the US or the UK around Christmas time, because there are kind of like things just around that season that you hear all the time, right? Definitely. And I mean, preparing this podcast and even now that we've started filming and recording, I'm so excited because I feel like it's really marking the start of the Christmas period. And I'm just so excited to share all of this vocabulary and, you know, all this cultural knowledge with everyone. But I do want to ask you one question, Ethan, because you mentioned walking down a snowy meadow. Mm -hmm. So what's a meadow? A meadow is like a large I think of like a large area with kind of like rolling green hills, right? Yeah, exactly. Something like that. And it's snowy, like, I don't know, that's kind of very Christmassy. You think of snow and kind of everything's white and it gives like a certain sensation of peace, right? Yeah, definitely for you coming from Colorado because <laughs> right. you tend to have uh, snowy Christmases, In don't London, you? In London, would it just be cold rain or...? Yeah, it depends, <laughs> to be honest. Usually we might get some snow before or after, never... Mm -hmm a white Christmas, which we'll talk about a bit later. Yeah, for me living here in Barcelona, it's actually one of the things I most miss. It's like something's off, you know, there's no there's no white uh, hills or white mountains out the window while you're opening up your Christmas presents on Christmas morning. Yeah, I'll, that would be incredible. I would love to experience that one day. Yeah, so definitely I'll have to rent a cabin in the Pyrenees or something so you yeah. can have a taste of that. Yeah, that's a good idea. And if you are watching this over on YouTube, then I want to highly recommend that you go down in the description below and that you download the podcast version of this because it's a really convenient way that you can take this with you. You can have us in your ears improving your English listening and vocabulary and pronunciation kind of on the go in convenient ways, maybe while you're doing your Christmas shopping, if that's something that you participate in. And something I wanted to mention as well, because you said it's kind of like a cultural insight, right? Because at least in the United States, uh, I think a lot of people wrongly think that Christmas is just like a religious holiday, but I think of it much more as a cultural holiday because I know so many people who don't consider themselves Christian, who are not at all religion, who never go to church, and that, you know, are crazy about Christmas as kind of like a cultural holiday. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a big misconception because obviously mm -hmm. it is a Christian uh, and a religious festival because Christmas, even the name, it has his name in it, Christ, mm -hmm. um, who, if you believe in Christianity, is like the son of God. However, lots of people just celebrate it more as a tradition mm -hmm. and not really for religious purposes and actually i was so shocked when working in some schools here in barcelona and i would ask some of the children sometimes oh do you know like where the story originated and they had no idea that it came from the religion they're just like no it's just christmas <laughs> so that was quite interesting 
That's great. So we'll kind of share with you some of the kind of more cultural aspects of this holiday, which there's a whole spirit around it. And it goes on sometimes even for like months. Some people start it in the US, at least like right after Halloween, maybe right after Thanksgiving. So October, November. And it's a really nice time of year, I think, to be in the US or in the UK, I believe as well. Definitely. I think London is quite magical at Christmas. That's amazing. So we're going to talk a lot about that. But before we do, we want to give a thank you to one of our listeners out there. So today's shout out comes from Zvonka, London, from the United Kingdom. And it's titled The Best Podcast for English Learners. I've been listening to your podcast for one month already. It's the best podcast. I listen to it every day. With your podcast, my listening and comprehension skills improved a lot. Now I'm looking forward to improving my speaking skills. Ah, uh, yeah, Zvonka. So thanks so much for taking the time to go and leave us a review. I'm glad that it's helping you. And if you're in the United Kingdom, I'm sure a lot of the things that you're going to be hearing today will help you for kind of getting a little bit more in that Christmas spirit. So if you want us to shout you out, it's really simple. You just have to head over to wherever you're listening to us, just like on Apple Podcasts, like Svanka did, or on Stitcher or anywhere else, and leave us a five-star review. And if you do, this is really great because it's helping other learners from around the world to also have a lot of fun learning English with us. So that said, we have a quote that both Andrea and I love and we really want to share with you. Yeah, I think we had to choose one from this movie for today. So the quote was said by Will Ferrell, but it wasn't Will Ferrell the actor. It was the character he played in the movie Elf. Mm -hmm. And the quote is, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. So this is such a great one. That's a really fantastic movie. If you haven't watched it, it's probably my all-time favorite. Yeah, for me as well, it's in my top three. And you'll find out my top 10 Christmas <laughs> movies if you head on over to our channel, Learn English with TV, mm -hmm. where I made a lesson on this. And of course, Elf is in there for sure. Definitely. We'll put that in the description and the show notes as well if anyone wants to go check that out. And I think this movie is really great too because... This guy, he's kind of like the embodiment of what is Christmas cheer and Christmas spirit. So what exactly does that mean, Christmas cheer? How would you spread Christmas cheer? So, well, in this movie, what happens is there are lots of people that don't really believe anymore. And mm -hmm. to help Santa, like, deliver the presents and to get the sleigh working again, he's saying that everyone needs to start singing and believe in the, the spirit of Christmas again. Mm -hmm. So spreading Christmas cheer is just, you know, being happy, giving, and giving doesn't mean buying lots of presents and giving presents because that's another thing with Christmas. Sometimes people think about the commercial side of it more, mm -hmm. but it's more about spending time with your loved ones and giving out love and kindness and things like this. So yeah, I think that definitely kind of encapsulates that it really captures kind of what this movie is about and really what the Christmas season is all about. Uh, and definitely, like we said, go check out that video that Andrea made so you can kind of get in some of that Christmas cheer with some really fantastic movies while you're practicing your English. And that said, I think we can roll into some of the expressions and vocabulary we have today that it's going to really help people also to be able to understand any of these movies and to have a little bit more cultural insight. So what's the first one on our list? So the first one is what people tend to say to each other when they're greeting, and that is Happy Christmas. Or would you say Happy Christmas? No, that sounds really odd to me. For us, it's a word that we really only use around Christmas, but we'd say Merry Christmas. Okay. Yeah, because I tend to use Merry Christmas a bit more. I think like when I'm writing cards and things like this. But generally in the UK, people tend to say Happy Christmas more than Merry Christmas, which I think they say more in the States. Yeah, I think the first time I saw this actually was in Harry Potter because, yeah, it's like Ron comes down on Christmas morning and says, Happy Christmas, Harry, you know, and it's like, Happy Christmas. It's just, it sounds so weird, I think, to an American ear where you've, your whole life you've always heard Merry Christmas. Yeah. And there's kind of these words like this that I think we only use in the Christmas season, like merry, jolly, cheer. These are all words that I kind of think of that all are very similar, right? They kind of mean like being happy and being uh, kind of giving that love, like you were saying. And 
that we use a lot a ton you'll hear them in like all the christmas movies and all the christmas songs and everything like that but then the rest of the year we don't really use them very much that's true there is interesting maybe for some people when we say merry as well in the uk like sometimes you might go out for a night out and you say oh i got a bit merry have you heard that <laughs> i have not do you know what it means then? I can imagine. Yeah. You're, you're feeling a little bit uh, bubbly maybe or something like that. Yeah. Like another yeah. word would be tipsy, not quite drunk so that you've had too much, but maybe you've had one or two glasses of champagne or wine or something. And so we would describe this as getting a bit merry. There you go. So you could do that not just around Christmas, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Although there's a lot of alcohol involved, I think, around Christmas too. People will have Christmas parties and things like this. And so you could find that as well. <laughs> people getting merry on christmas so the next one we have that's i think kind of similar i don't know if you use this as much in the uk but because christmas is kind of like a long word especially when we're writing a lot of times we'll write xmas and now people will even say this like merry xmas yeah yeah we don't say it as much but definitely when we're writing it because it's just quicker it saves time uh people tend to write xmas mm -hmm. That's, that's fantastic. And then the next one I found that I really liked because we say it all the time and then I actually saw that it's now considered a word in the dictionary and that's Christmassy. So we could say like we're doing kind of a Christmassy podcast today. We had a Christmassy quote. What does that mean? So it's an adjective. It's used as an adjective. So it's to describe something that is Christmassy. So mm -hmm. to do with Christmas or maybe decorative like Christmas. Um, so yeah, today's podcast is very Christmassy. When you came to my into my apartment today, you said, oh, it feels really Christmassy here. Exactly, yeah. So maybe if people are watching on YouTube, you can actually see a little bit the tree behind me. So Andrea has done some really nice decorating. But uh, that's like, I think a really great one because kind of like we're talking about, there's this whole culture around it. There's this whole spirit around Christmas. And so much so that we actually need a word to describe that sort of feeling and spirit, right? It's true, yeah. So we've spoken about the words merry and jolly and how you get this feeling at Christmas, but we also have this saying, the more the merrier. Yeah, we would say that as well. Yeah. So what does that mean? So it's like, for example, if you're inviting people around and they're like, oh, are you sure? Won't there be lots of people? Or we don't want to impose, like, you know, we don't want to give you more work mm -hmm. or something like this. And someone would say, oh, no, of course not. The more, the merrier. Mm -hmm. So it means the more people in a group, then the happier and more jolly and merry it would be. Yeah. And I think we use that like all year round, really, don't we? Like anytime, I think you used a great phrase there. I don't want to impose, right? You can use that to be more polite. Yeah. So we would use it all year round. It's, you know, when you're inviting someone and you say, yeah, why not come around the more the merrier or if you're going out for something as well. It's a, it's a nice one. It's very, again, it's just very jolly and happy. Exactly. So moving on from that, we have maybe a couple that you might find a lot if you listen to any Christmas music. I'm not sure if people listening are big fans of that, but I think that's a great way to to learn about Christmas and everything is by songs because they use a lot of this vocabulary. And we actually did, uh, I think it was last year, a lesson that was looking at like a lot of this vocabulary as well in the context of songs. So we'll link that down in the description and on the show notes. Uh, but the first one we have here is a very strange word, Yuletide. Yeah, so... I know this word from listening to songs mm -hmm. mainly. So it just means Christmas, doesn't it? Like Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And you'll have it like as an adjective, I think a lot of times too, like um, like Yuletide carols. What would Yuletide carols be? So carols are the songs, like the more older songs, maybe some more religious songs as well, would you say like Christmas carols? Yeah, I suppose you could find all sorts because you could find people maybe who go about singing like the more religious ones or maybe like the more festive ones. Yeah, yeah. so Yuletide carols would be Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you'll hear that a lot, it's like Yuletide. I think it actually comes from Old English. So like this is like the English, I guess, that was spoken before the French invaded the island and everything and kind of brought in that Latin influence. So you'll have like sometimes that in certain contexts and poems and movies and in songs that this word will be used. Yeah, and it makes me think of the Yule log. What is that? So it's one of the desserts that we have on Christmas day. So my brother-in-law actually usually makes it every year and he makes it really well. It's like a chocolate dessert, but 
you roll it. So oh, okay. you might have seen like a Swiss roll or something. Uh -huh. So you make the cake, but it's really flat and thin. And then you put like cream, chocolate kind of um, buttercream or something. Mm -hmm. And then you roll it and it ends up looking like a log, mm -hmm. which is basically like, if you think of a tree stump or the tree trunk mm -hmm. or parts of a tree, that's what a log is, what you'd find in the forest. So it looks like this. That sounds really tasty. Oh, it is. It's one of the <laughs> best Christmas desserts. It's so delicious. Yeah. So I think that's a perfect point that we can kind of talk about too, just like food at Christmas. There's so much revolves around food about like gorging yourself, right? Definitely. Lots of people just overeat, you know, they have the excuse, oh, well, it's Christmas. And you actually mentioned a phrase that people tend to say, like, if if you're feeling a bit guilty or you're, you're saying, oh, I'm overeating, what do people usually say to you? A lot of times people would say, you know, Christmas only comes once a year. Yeah. So by that, they mean, you know, it's one day, enjoy yourself, don't worry about it. Exactly. But then what tends to happen because it's not really just one day like you have christmas <laughs> eve christmas day in the uk we have boxing day mm -hmm. which is the, the 26th and then you have new year's and it just goes on for like a couple of weeks it does <laughs> here you even like we extend it even more because then there's like the king's day so it's almost like a like a three-week sprint of eating it's true <laughs> and your house is just full of all these goodies and all yeah. these indulgences so every day you're just eating something that you can't waste you have to eat all those leftovers exactly yeah. <laughs> what are leftovers so leftovers is so when you have a meal if there's anything left over anything you haven't eaten we call them leftovers and then we tend to eat them the next day so often what happens at christmas time is in my family especially we tend to buy quite a big turkey so then there's always turkey left over so if you've seen the episode in friends with yeah. ross's sandwich <laughs> his famous turkey sandwich from thanksgiving i think it was wasn't it um it's really it is actually really nice to make a nice sandwich with or my dad actually used to use the turkey the leftover turkey mm -hmm. to make curry Really? They tend to do that, which is quite interesting. That sounds really tasty. But yeah, we would do the sandwiches a lot. So like I always remember that. And after Thanksgiving and after Christmas, you always have like the leftover sandwich. Yeah. Yum. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if there was some way to understand real English without getting lost and without getting bored? Well, now there is. With our real life native immersion course, we will take you on a 41 week real life adventure of the English language. Each week exploring a different topic connected to our goal to help you understand and use real native English and make it a permanent part of your life in a way that is fun, natural, and convenient. The best part is you can try it for free with our three part power learning series. We will send it to your email. Just go to reallifeglobal.com slash pod, that's P-O-D, to sign up. Now, let's get back to today's podcast lesson. So the next one, I think like this is perfect because you've already done it here in your house, so you have deck to the halls, right? <laughs> yes. So deck the halls means that you've decorated the place, right? So it's a short way of saying decorate. Yeah. Yeah, and actually there's a phrase over, I'm not sure if it comes from this or like the same root or something, but you could say something's really decked out, uh, which you might say that means like if something's really decked out, that it has a lot of features or it's like really blown up with decorations or something like that. So you think of like a decked out car, for example, might have like a big stereo or it might be like raised up with like really big wheels or it might have like all this gold or something like that. Yes, that makes total sense. And sometimes you might say that someone's Christmas tree is completely exactly. decked out, <laughs> which means that they've thrown loads of decorations on it. Mm -hmm. We actually, in the US, it's a little bit deceiving actually, but we use uh, expression to say that we trim the tree, which means that you're kind of doing all of that decorating of the tree. Would you use the same expression? I haven't heard that one before. I think it's confusing because trim, when you talk about plants, is usually like you're cutting off parts of it. Yeah. That you shouldn't that you're not going to use or that are dead or something like that. But like when you use it with trim the Christmas tree, it's the actual part decorating it. So that's always like a tradition with my family that we would uh, especially with my mom, that we kinda like put on the Christmas music and maybe grab some eggnog and kind of spend some time just like decorating the tree together and getting out we have actually ornaments 
from every year because my mom would buy us like special ornament related to something from that year so if we went on a trip she would like try to get something from that place or something just so like uh when we would do this we're trimming the tree we would kind of be looking through them and we'd be kind of like remembering so it was really nice we'd like go ornament by ornament looking at each one and kind of having a uh, walk down memory lane yeah oh that's so nice what does that mean a walk down memory lane basically doing something like that like maybe you look at an old photo book or something and you're just reminiscing right you're being nostalgic yeah Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> I did that a little bit with some places that I went to, like, especially in Austria. I remember we went one summer and there was a Christmas shop there that's open all year round. And I bought some decorations from there and things like that. So on my dad's tree in Cyprus, he has more of these ones that we've collected over the years. But that's a really nice way to like reflect on the year as you're decorating your Christmas tree. Exactly. Yeah. So Another thing we do a lot of times right around the same time that we're trimming the tree is we would get out our Christmas stocking and uh, we don't have a fireplace actually at my parents' house anymore. The old one we did, but we, where I grew up, we had a fireplace and we always hang it over the fireplace, the Christmas stockings. Why would you hang the Christmas stockings over the fireplace? Because that's where Santa comes down. So it's kind of, you know, it would be easily accessible for him when he comes out of the, the fireplace down the chimney that he could, you know, go straight first for the, the stocking stuffers. Stocking stuffers? Stocking stuffers. Do you use that term? No, but we do say something similar. We say stocking fillers. Okay. So there's a lot here. So first of all, what are stockings? So literally stockings are what women wear on their legs. So they're kind of like tights, but they don't come all the way up. So they're longer than socks. They tend to come up to the thigh. Mm -hmm. But we have Christmas stockings that are, they're usually like Christmas colors and they're quite big. It just looks like a really big sock, yeah, doesn't basically. it? <laughs> yeah. And this is like another tradition. And I actually read about this and it comes from St. Nicholas. Yeah. And he filled up the stockings of three poor sisters with gold coins mm. to help them um, because you know, they, they needed help and so that they could have some good fortune and some help with um, with some money and things. This is what he did. And I think that's where this tradition comes from. That's really interesting. I always thought it's like similar. They have a tradition in some countries that uh, in Germany, I think that St. Nicholas's Day was actually like the 6th of December or something like that. And St. Nicholas would leave presents in children's shoes. And I think they do the same here on the King's Day, like the Kings leave like candies or something like that in children's shoes so that's interesting yeah we celebrate saint nicholas day on the 6th of december too mm -hmm. but um i don't know about this tradition with the stockings that's interesting <laughs> so i guess so people can kind of get the idea that we have this big sock that we hang and saint nicholas which is the same as santa claus right that people know about is kind of where he comes from is from this actual person who is saint nicholas and he'll come down the chimney and he'll stuff your stocking with things. Yeah, so what's usually in your stocking? So it's always like filled to the brim, it's like stuffing. Like my mom really likes to go all out on the, the stocking stuffers. So we'll have things like chocolates and candies and things, but then like nowadays, especially, she goes for like practicality a lot too. So like maybe I'll have, I don't know, some sort of like hand cream or something like that you know or uh you'll have like other little trinkets that you know might be useful for you that you need more of or something like that so you said a couple of things there so you said <laughs> full to the brim what full does to that the brim mean? that means it's absolutely full like you can't fit another thing in there and you also mentioned trinkets trinkets that would be like a little gift right like a I don't know. I think if like you go on vacation or something, you get someone like a souvenir, like a little trinket from that place mm -hmm. that they can put on their fridge or have something to remind them of that place. Yeah. Yeah, we would do the same. Like it's usually filled with sweets and chocolate and things like that. But it's nice to buy small little gifts that you can pop in there as well that are quite fun. Mm -hmm. exactly. Some people put fruit as well, I think. Yeah, my mom would usually put like some nectarines to balance out the sugar, you know, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be for us. We'd like open that first always on Christmas as well. Like my when we were young, especially because we wake up like super early Christmas morning, because we open our presents Christmas morning, not Christmas Eve at night. So uh, because we would wake up so early, they'd be like, let us get our coffee. You open the stockings and we'll be like over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also just so people know, 
for those children that don't live in a house with a chimney, Father Christmas would still visit. So <laughs> I grew up in a house, I think it was quite fashionable uh, during a period not to have like a fireplace. And I remember my parents always talking about regretting getting rid of the original fireplace in our, in our home and things mm -hmm. like that. But growing up, many people don't have a fireplace. Um, so Santa wouldn't be able to come down the chimney, but don't worry because, <laughs> you know, he's very creative. He finds different <laughs> ways of getting in there to leave your presents. <laughs> exactly. I think there's that movie, is it called the Santa Claus with, um, uh, it's got a comedian and I can't remember his name right now, actually. I can't remember his name either, but I know who you're talking about. It's a, I think it's a Disney one. And it's like about that, like a guy who I think he accidentally kills Santa and then he has to become Santa Claus. And I think that's one of the big questions that they answer in there is like, okay, what do you do if there's no chimney or what if yeah. the chimney is like super narrow and a person can't actually fit down it. And so you kind of see how they get around, uh, how he kind of gets creative and stuff to get into houses where it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah. That's another good one to watch. Yeah. So... That said, we have the Christmas stockings and the stocking stuffers um, and the stockings in general. If people if people ever like see these hung in people's houses in a Christmas movie or something, now they'll know what they're for. So something we do a lot too on like Christmas Day or around that time because during school we have time off, we might take a sleigh ride. Have you ever done that? I haven't, no, because there's never been enough snow for me <laughs> to even try. So what's a sleigh? So a sleigh, that's actually what Santa has, right? As he goes in, uh, in a sleigh with like the reindeer pulling it. And we have these, there was, uh, but by where I grew up, there was actually a farm where you could go and they have like a horse-drawn sleigh. Uh, they would take you through like the snowy meadows and everything and it's very lovely and you have like a hot chocolate and they put bells on it so like i don't know why this is such a christmas tradition but we think of like these these sleighs and because like the horses are moving and stuff when they move there's kind of like the sound of the bells so that's like a very christmasy sound isn't it yeah we would say jingle bells jingle bells like or sleigh bells yeah yeah that people might have heard that song too because it's like one that i think it's taught a lot to to students and stuff yeah definitely and actually, when you said a sleigh ride, I was actually thinking of a sled as well. Aren't they the same thing? Or I don't know, like a, a sleigh, there's like a carriage. A sleigh is kind of like a carriage, but instead of it having like wheels, yeah. it has, uh, I don't know what you call them, kind of like skis or something under it. So it's like a, a carriage that can move easily on the snow. But then there's the ones, you know, like if kids would like grab their sled and run to like the park yeah. or something and it's just one that they sit in and they slide down the snow in. We do that a lot as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, or like a toboggan, I've heard people call that as well. Oh, okay. I think those are like the more, the older ones, like the wooden ones that kind of have like the front is like curved and it's got like these metal skis on the bottom. Okay. And then the new ones that are just like made of plastic and they're like very, very easy. Yeah. Yeah. So we've actually been talking a little bit about a term that's very common that we talked about, St. Nicholas, who in the US we often call Santa Claus, but you said a different name, didn't you? Yeah, so in the UK, we call him Father Christmas. That's so strange. Like, do you know what that comes from? I'm not sure, to be honest. I guess just maybe because he's like this figure that goes around delivering the presents to all the children. So he's like, you know, the father of Christmas in yeah. a way. And I do think now because of the influence from the US and stuff, kids in the UK probably tend to say Santa a little bit more, mm. but I don't know. I think maybe growing up and in, in their homes, people will still call him Father Christmas. But obviously when you're watching all these movies and things like that, he's referred to as Santa. Mm -hmm. And is the image of him the same? Is he like a fat man with like the red and white suit and yeah. the big beard? Yeah, he is. The image is the same, but didn't he, wasn't his traditional costume green originally? I think so, because like my mom actually had like a decoration that's like, and, and it looks more to me like it could be like a father Christmas because it, it just looks like kind of like an old man with like a green uh, garb and everything and, and like a sack of, of presents, but it's not like, he's not like fat or anything like that. And he just looks like a kind of a normal older man. Yeah, because I think, I'm not 100% sure if it's true, but I think it was actually Coca-Cola that made really? him red because they had that famous advert, you know, holidays are coming, holidays are coming. And it was like, um, 
I've got it in my head now, but it was Father Christmas, like in a red suit and everything. And I think that's how it changed. That's incredible if that just came from them. I mean, yeah. that's, it's their, uh, if you think about it, it's their logos, colors and everything. Exactly. And you mentioned that he wears like, or he's in this garb. What mm -hmm. does garb mean? Garb is an outfit, right? So it's kind of like a... It also sounds like kind of like a more formal, like old timey word, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So you guys don't have Santa. You said you've said kids will use it maybe a little bit. Do you have secret Santa? We do. So I definitely think this came from the US, mm -hmm. but in the last, I'm not sure how long, maybe 10 years or so, I remember doing secret Santa. So maybe you can describe what this is for us. I confuse these games a little bit because we, we have a couple like this, but I believe Secret Santa is the one where like you'll draw names out of a hat. Basically, you'll have like a group of friends, you'll pick names out of a hat, and then whoever's name you pick would be the one that you buy a present for. Yeah, we always did this in the workplace as well, which was quite fun. Mm -hmm. So we would do what you said, or now there's even other ways to do it. You put in email addresses and you get an email notification with the person you're buying a mm, gift for. That's amazing. And you set like a, a limit, maybe 10 euros, 15 euros, whatever you want it to be. And it's meant to be a secret, but some people end up always telling each other at the end. But I know some people that don't at all. They're like, no, it's secret Santa. I can't <laughs> tell you who I bought a gift for. <laughs> yeah, there's some people are very serious. They take it very seriously. Yeah. Right? We do one more with, um, actually like my sister-in-law family, we always do this when, when I'm there. Um, but it'll be called White Elephant or it's like a gift exchange. And it's kind of similar, but like everyone buys a gift. They don't know who it's going to. And so you'll have however many people and then you actually draw out of hats like a number. And so, you know, you basically go in order and you pick uh, all the presents are on the table. You pick the present you want. So actually you want to be like the highest number possible because you want to pick last. And then you also like have different people play different ways, but you can like steal gifts too. So it's like, if you come last, then you can like steal the best gift and things like this. So it can be like a, a really kind of like fun, little bit competitive way to try to get the best gift and everything. That makes sense to me now because there's an episode on the US office oh, where go. it's actually Secret Santa, but then Michael changes the rules because he doesn't like the gift that he got. And <laughs> they're all trying to get, um, I, can't, I think it was an iPod or something like that. Mm, and that so rings then a bell. it turns into White Elephant. Okay, now I understand what it is. There you go. So these are really fun games to play. I think when you have like, if you have friends or something and I think it's kind of just because you don't want to buy a present for every single friend. It kind of can get very expensive for people. And so you'll you'll do a game like this where you just have to buy one present, but everyone ends up getting a, a present. Okay, fun. <laughs> so something we used to do when we were kids is we would always have to write a letter to Santa with our wish list, and then we give it to our parents and they would supposedly send it off to St. Nick or send it off to Santa Claus at the North Pole. Yeah. Yeah, we would do the same. So your wish list is writing a list of all the things that you would like mm -hmm. to be gifted to you. And lots of kids write to Santa to say whether they've been naughty or nice that year <laughs> as well. And I think that's something that parents use a lot to mm -hmm. instill positive and good behavior in their children because they'll say, oh, have you been good or have you been bad? Which list of Santa, because Santa has a list as well, his naughty list and his nice list. Yeah. And so parents use that a lot to say, well, you have to be on his nice list to get a gift from yeah. Santa. What happens if you're on his naughty list? So usually I think you get a lump of coal, a right? A lump of coal, exactly, yeah. in your stocking, right? Yeah. Have you ever got a lump of coal? I've never gotten one. They actually, I, I worked in a candy shop for a while when I was younger and we sold these like candy lumps of coal. So it's kind of like a joke. The parents could put a lump of coal in the stocking. Yeah, that's really cool. That would be kind of like a creative way to, to play with that a little bit to scare the children. Some parents maybe that, that like to kind of trick their kids that way. That's funny. So... Yeah, you definitely don't want to wake up on Christmas morning and find a lump of coal in your stocking because it means that you haven't been behaving yourself so much. Exactly. So I've heard people kind of refer to people who aren't so much in the Christmas spirit or who maybe are a little bit more on the naughty list than on the nice list. They'll say, you know, you're being a Scrooge or you're being a Grinch. What are these terms? 
So Scrooge actually comes from a Charles Dickens book called A Christmas Carol. And it's all about this old man named Scrooge who is just miserable. He doesn't have the Christmas spirit at all. He's very stingy, meaning he's very tight with his money. He doesn't want to spend anything on anyone or do anything for anyone else. And he's very famous for the line, bah humbug, right? He is, yeah. So if... If you hear people say bar humbug or, oh, you're so bar humbug, again, they're referring to Scrooge. <laughs> yeah. Then he's like someone who, even during Christmas, he wanted his employees to work and everything, and he wasn't really thinking about anyone else. And kind of we've talked about some of the culture and stuff, but I think really the spirit of Christmas, like you're saying, is like obviously spending time with family and loving and everything, but people always say, you know, it's like tis the season because you're supposed to think more about other people, even people outside your family. And a lot of people will make an excuse kind of this time of year to do charitable things, right? Yeah, exactly, because that was the whole point of this book. And it's also been made into movies many times. So if you have a look online, you'll find the original as well as some more recent ones. I think Jim Carrey made one as well mm -hmm. recently. And it's all about this having a spirit of giving and not in the sense necessarily of money or gifts, but mm -hmm. with love and kindness. And this is really interesting as well because Scrooge is visited by like the ghost of Christmas past and stuff mm -hmm. to try and teach him kind of how he's been and mm -hmm. maybe how he needs to change. So it's definitely one that really has this lovely Christmas spirit in it that you can learn a lot from. And yeah, this phrase is really funny too. <laughs> so you mentioned there, tis the season. What yeah. does that mean? It sounds like connected speech. It's kind of more old English though, isn't it? Like it comes from basically it is, tis, tis the season. It's the season to, now we'd say it's, right? It's the season, but people used to say tis. So it's tis the season to be jolly. For example, there's a song that goes like that. Uh, and basically it's talking about that. It's a time of year, tis the season means like it is, a time of the year in which you should be really happy, really kind to people. You should be, you know, out there singing, kind of like the quote that we had. And you should be thinking about people other than yourself, helping the needy maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because during this time of year, there's so many great charities that work to help mm -hmm. those in need. For example, from working in schools, we used to collect toys. So children would be bring in toys for those that are less fortunate than them so that they mm -hmm. can have a gift at Christmas time or we'd do food collections as well that would then be distributed within the community. Um, and also one year I volunteered for a charity in the UK called Crisis mm -hmm. and they set up Crisis at Christmas, which is during the Christmas period, they would set up in, in different areas of the UK mm -hmm. where the homeless could go to have a nice Christmas meal or a hot meal, have some company with people. So you would just chat with them. They would set up arts and crafts and there'd be hairdressers there so they could have a nice haircut and a shower as well and get some fresh clothes and things like this as well. So that definitely, I think, encompasses the Christmas spirit mm -hmm. and, you know, comes away from the thinking of just buying gifts and it being very commercial. It's very eye opening and it makes you think of others, which is what it's all about. Yeah, I think that's the really nice side of Christmas is that you kind of have people will act a little bit differently than they might the rest of the year and stuff. So we have a lot of very similar things like we'd have um, in the, the shopping mall in my town, for example. And I think this is something that you can find all over the US. There's always like a big tree and it has all these papers hung on it. And basically on each paper, there's like a child who, you know, has asked for something for Christmas. So it's like a, you know, a child in need. And usually it'd be things like that they need a, a new jacket or snow boots or things like this, like living in Colorado that, you know, if you like those things are very expensive to get a, a good pair of boots and a good pair of good jackets and mittens and things like this. And they're absolutely essential there because it's snowing, it's cold. And so that's like a really nice way that people can kind of help kids who maybe their parents can't really afford those things to make sure that they're they're able to be kind of like comfortable and safe during the, that time. That's a really lovely idea. Mm -hmm. You mentioned mittens there. What are mittens? Mittens. So we have gloves, which are like what you put on your hands and your fingers are separated. And then mittens are the same concept, but your fingers are all together except for your thumbs. So they 
yeah, I mean, it looks like a bit like oven mitts or something like that, right? Yeah, and would adults wear mittens? Sometimes. I mean, I've worn them skiing because they're really warm because you have your fingers together and stuff. So they're quite common. I've seen like hybrid ones where you'll have kind of like sort of a glove inside of a mitten and things like this. So yeah, adults do them, do oh, wear them. Okay, cool. I think a little bit about that song. It's kind of a Christmas song, The uh, My Favorite Things. Ah, yeah. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Exactly. And then warm woolen mittens. Something about warm yeah. woolen mittens. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, from the sound of music. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one you might hear a lot in the, the shopping centers and stuff, right? I can't believe I just sang on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you did Sorry, really everyone. <laughs> Tis the season. <laughs> yeah, I'm really in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> so... So a couple of other expressions that you can use, I think any time of year, actually, this one, you can say Christmas came early. When would we say that? Yeah, we might even say this generally, not just at Christmas, right? Would you would you say it I would other say times it's of year as Because well? it's like early. So it's, it's like, yeah, if maybe someone in July, for example, bought you some really great gift, it's not your birthday or like any special occasion, you might say like, oh, Christmas came early. What is this for? Yeah. So it's like, oh, wow, like this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Like... This is so nice. It's a surprise and it feels like Christmas. A little bit. It's kind of like a nice uh, a nice feeling of like receiving something, right? Exactly. And so, yeah, that's one that you could use anytime. I think it's nice when someone gives you a gift or something like that. It's a great one to use. Yeah, definitely. And there's another expression that you might hear a lot if maybe someone gives you a present and it's not very great or anything, but, you know, you're wanting to say, okay, well, maybe someone got you, for example, like a sweater and it doesn't fit you or something like that. You could say like, oh, well, it's the thought that counts. Yeah. So what does that mean? So that's like when you say that, you know, it's really nice that the person thought of you and they had really nice intentions and you could use it, I guess, as well. Sometimes maybe if you buy something small for someone or if you just buy them something just kind of thinking of them, but maybe you don't spend a lot of money and, you know, someone might say to you, oh, I just got you this, it's nothing much, but, and then someone will say to you, oh, but it's the thought that counts. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's basically the Christmas spirit. That's part of it as well, right? It's just kind of like thinking of other people and kind of like those small details that you want to just kind of show that that person was on your mind. Exactly. So... I think that's a great place to wrap up this podcast and maybe we can actually put a few extra terms over on Instagram. So if you head over to at reallife.english, you can learn a couple more Christmassy things. And we definitely from us here at Real Life English want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Even if you don't celebrate it, I hope that you can have some great time with family and friends and that you're finding yourself on a very difficult year in kind of like a safe and happy place. Definitely. So I think it's fitting if I say happy Christmas to everyone celebrating. And even if you're not, try and spend time if you can with loved ones or just reminisce and think about the things that you can be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Maybe do something thoughtful for someone without them expecting it. Exactly. So that said, one, two, three. Ah, yeah. yeah. Hey again, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Don't be a stranger. You can find all the notes like vocabulary, links, and more for this lesson on our blog at reallifeglobal.com. And connect with us and on Instagram at reallife.english for even more fun English recommendations. Do you want to continue your learning and get confident, fluent English? Then I have a couple great recommendations for you. First of all, check out our YouTube channel, Learn English with TV series, where you can have fun learning to understand fast speaking natives with your favorite movies, series, and more without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Second, if you like our podcast, then our real life native immersion course is perfect for you. It is the next best thing to studying abroad in an English speaking country. Try it for free with our three part power learning series. Just go to reallifeglobal.com slash pod to sign up. Finally, if you are enjoying our podcast, then please assist us in helping more people go beyond the classroom and live their English. You can do this by sending a link to this podcast to a friend or by leaving us a five-star review wherever you are listening. We might even shout you out on the podcast. Stay healthy and safe, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Aw, yeah.